When I was 13, I played Amnesia The Dark Descent. Huddled around a computer that rightly should have exploded the second I opened the game, my friends and I collectively shrieked, gasped, and anxiety puked. That was me, true story. Now, 13 years on, I'm playing Amnesia The Bunker, the latest entry in Frictional Games' series of clinical fear trials disguised as entertainment. The year is 1916, and World War I rages around Henry Clement. Mud and bullets and blood. We're starting off strong, guys. I run through the trenches, gun in hand. Something I'm not used to seeing in an amnesia game, but given the setting, I guess it's appropriate. I just hope it doesn't ruin the tense atmosphere by... Oh, wait, never mind, it's okay. That's definitely not gonna be a problem. A whole two bullets! Wow. Now I'm back to thinking that just like a run button, the presence of a gun means there's going to be a need for it. Yay! The need in question presents itself pretty soon when, after being taken out by a German shell, Henry wakes up in a French underground bunker, with no memory of how he got there and no knowledge of why the place is in such disarray. As is custom in an amnesia game, I immediately start testing out the physics engine. Maybe one of these pillows has the answers I need. Hmm, no go. So I reluctantly start exploring the bunker and stumble across my first tool, the loudest frickin' flashlight in existence. But I cling to it like my life depends on it, and according to this picture I find, it just might. I take the first of many breaks to go through my journal, not because I'm already scared, but because I deeply care about... It is lunch in the mess hall. Yeah, that. As I wander the halls, I can't help but feel claustrophobic. The corridors are narrow, the dark creeps out behind sharp corners, and it's getting hard to ignore the giant burrowing holes in the walls. I attribute it simply to some very big rats that I hope I never meet. Ah, shit. That's okay, I'm a big brave girl playing a big brave French man. Get up, big brave French man! It becomes obvious to me that to get around some obstacles, like locked doors for instance, one needs to use a more direct approach. My precious ammo for a door lock. The balancing act begins. The now lockless door leads me into the administrator's office, where a note on the table tells me to check dog tags for unique codes to open lockers. But more importantly, I finally found a place to save my progress. The good vibes don't last long though, because I also find a generator that I need to keep fueled up at all times. Truly, Henry and I cannot catch a break. From the notes, I gleam that lights on means limiting the beast's movements, lights off, and it can go anywhere. But much like my ammo, fuel cans are scarce and vary in levels of fullness, most only providing a quarter of a tank at best. And turns out, my only way out of this hellhole is by blowing up a blockage with dynamite. Problem there is, the dynamite is locked in an arsenal and the trigger handle is in the tunnels. Because of course it is. I can't take the map in administrations, so I must rely on memory to get around each of the five locations that make up the bunker. The prison, soldiers' quarters, arsenal, maintenance, and the central bunker. I forget to refill the stupid generator on my way out and end up walking around in the dark, terrified of using my chainsaw torch in case the beast hears me. Turns out, I didn't even need to worry because the beast found me anyway. I vow to never let the generator go out again. Inventory space is limited, which means every item needs to be assessed for its value before I decide to drag it halfway across the map to my stash. Things like cloths and sticks are useless on their own, but can be combined to make a torch, which scares off these freaky little rats that, if you get too close, will take a bite out of you. I do wish I'd known that sooner though, because I was getting rid of rats like this for two hours. Although navigating the halls is easier with the lights on, the beast responds to noise like gunfire, throwing things, or poorly executed grenade tosses. You have to really think about whether getting through a locked door is worth the effort of drawing it out, since bullets and grenades only stun the thing, and both are scarce. Thankfully, despite its impressive response time, the beast AI is very dumb and cannot, for instance, see you if you are under a table in plain sight. For the less anxious amongst us, this might quell some of the fear it inspires, but my butt remained firmly clenched regardless. 
The only time I relaxed was when I was so confused on what I needed to do that I forgot to be scared. The puzzles aren't tricky per se, usually only needing you to find a certain item or get power to a certain area. But because you don't have an objective list, and sometimes you can figure out a solution before you're given all the clues, it wasn't uncommon for me to be stuck hitting a wall, wasting time and resources on something I'd already solved when I could have been focusing elsewhere. Not a deal breaker, just a tension breaker occasionally. But after a few more panic breaks and a couple of very poor decisions, seriously, who keeps leaving tripwires around? I finally felt like I had my head screwed on. Notes Left Behind had given away the story fairly early, but I didn't really mind. I'm a bit preoccupied with my imminent demise to care about personal struggles. I had a goal, and every step taken towards it felt like a victory, even when it seemed like I probably could have gotten out of my problems other ways. Henry, you could definitely crawl through there, man. Don't worry about the bullets. You've got enough bandages around your torso. You're practically the Michelin Man. <sighs> anyway, after six hours, I finally have everything I need. Bolt cutters take out chains that had once blocked my path, and a wrench unlocks gates that would have been really nice to crawl through had I found it sooner. But it doesn't matter, because I am ready for a climactic showdown with the beast that's haunted me all this time. Bring it here, you cosmic entity from the depths of- I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Though I will say I was expecting something more. Honestly, the last leg of the journey did feel a bit underwhelming, even as someone who got the references to previous Amnesia titles. But I'm not going to judge a game of its lackluster last 15 minutes when the rest has been so thoroughly butt-clenchingly delightful slash terrifying. I don't think Amnesia the Bunker quite measures up to the stress vomits of the Dark Descent, but I'm also self-aware enough to understand that what 13-year-old me found scary is different to what 25-year-old me finds scary. That idiot still had lightner eyes, the total fool. But that doesn't mean it's not a banger of a horror game. The atmosphere is palpable, weaving both incredible sound and environmental design to create this tense, claustrophobic experience where every sound is a potential threat. And with codes and resources randomized with every playthrough, despite knowing what awaits you, there's still room for replayability. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go change my pants for unrelated reasons. Play.